Hello, what is up all my Dragonettes? Welcome to another video. This is going to be episode 3 of My Hero Academia Story. Alright, and let's just jump right into it. Also, today I'm going to try a 20 minute special. Yee. Yeah. Akagi was sleeping in her bed with Salem curled up next to her. Her alarm hadn't been set the night before. <sighs> Where is she? We're gonna be late if she doesn't hurry up, Kurodo mumbles to himself. Maybe you should check on her. It, check on her to see if she is awake, Dobby suggested as a joke. I wasn't talking to you. I'll go see anyways, Kurodo replied. He then walked down the hall to her door and knocked. Akagi, are you awake? We have to go to the exam. Huh? She asked half asleep. I take it you're not up yet. Kuroda replied. Akagi looked at the time. Shoot! She got up quickly, knocking Salem off the bed and quickly got dressed. How much time do I have? She half, she half yelled through the door. Mm, maybe like five to ten minutes. Just hurry up. I'll be waiting at the door. Crota replied as he walks away. Got it! She hurried up. She brushed her hair and put it back into a bun, mainly to keep it out of her face. Salem then hopped onto her shoulders. She pulled her combat boots on and then left her room. Looks like you're here. Let's go. Crota says while walking out the door. Here, I can make the trip quicker. She put a hand on Crota's shoulder and melted into the shadows with them. And when they came back up, they were a block away from UA. Wow. That was faster. That felt strange, too. Kurodu replied. Well, you better get used to it. As that's how we will be traveling. Since we can't exactly go directly to our base. She said with a shrug rocking over to UA's entrance. Sam's still on her shoulder, but he was invisible to everyone who wasn't Akagi Kurodu. That's true. Can't let them find out, Kurodu replied while following her. Akaki looked around at other students, yelling at each other. Ugh. She looked. Akaki looked around at other students, eyeing each one and trying to analyze how much of a threat they would be to her or their mission. There's so many people here. Can't believe they're all trying to be heroes. Like half of them won't even get in. Kurodu chuckled. I'd say less than 20%, Aki responded. Move out of my way, extra! A blonde, spiky dude yelled. Kurodu turned around to face the boy. Who says we have to move for you? Kurodu responded. Me, you damn extra! He replied back. Aki just rolled her eyes and ignored him. Let's just go. He's part of the 80% that won't make it in. Akagi said in a cunning voice to Kurodu, but made sure the boy could hear her. Yeah, you're right. Kurodu smirked as he, as he walked away. Ha? Huh? Ha? Huh? What'd you say? He yelled. You heard me perfectly well, she said, then turned her back to him and caught up with Kurodu. That's amusing, Kurodu said. Yeah, I just hate that he might actually be in the present that pass. She said under her breath. She hated overly loud guys who did not know their proper place. Yeah, to think they would even let a guy like him in. How could you possibly be a hero who saves people when he yells at people to move out of the way, calling them extras? Kuroda replied. I think he just shrugged her shoulders. I just hope that if we get the same class, I can put him in his place. She growled slightly. Then she relaxed. She couldn't let herself get worked up, especially before the test. Yeah, that will be a great time, Kurodu said. We should probably get inside now. Yeah, let's go, Akagi said walking into the building and found where they were to sit. Kurodu followed her in. Guess it's time. Let's see how these wannabe heroes act, he said. Whoever does worse has to hang out with Toga for an entire day and do whatever she says. Akagi said, proposing a bet of sorts. You're on, but I'm going to win, Kurodu said. We will see about that, 
she replied confidently. The tests were soon passed out, and a few staff members watched the kids take the test. The kids finished the test, and they were collected. Now it was time for the physical portion. That was not as bad as you would think, Kuroto said. I finished within minutes, Akagi said proudly. Anyways, what sec section are you in for the physical test? Akagi asked. Looks like section D, Kuroto replied. Darn, I'm in section A. Guess we won't be in the same area for the test, then, Kuroto replied. Well, don't let anyone beat you, she teased. <laughs> like I would, Kuroto replied back. She smirked, then waited for instruction on what the physical test would be. The instructions were given out to the students, and they were called to go to their section for the test. Akagi went to her section. Okay. Akagi went to her section and saw the blondie again. The doors opened and Akagi immediately moved in, not waiting for any signal. The teachers watching the obs obs observatory obs observation place took note. What are you all waiting for? There's no start in an actual battle! President Mike yelled. Kuroto went to his section. The doors opened and he rushed in, taking down a robot along the way. Akagi took down a couple robots and to annoy the blondie, she went after the ones he was going after. Kuroto cut down a couple more robots, ice impaling them. Soon enough, the zero pointer came out and most ran away. Akagi have her however, accepted his challenge and ran towards it as well as another student. Kurodu mainly cleared his way from cleared his mainly stayed clear away from the zero pointer, taking down as many one pointers and two pointers as he could. If no more were in range, he would gladly take the challenge. The student was shocked when he saw that Akagi was also pursuing the zero pointer. Akagi then noticed a girl that was stuck under rocks. Hey, are you fast? She asked the kid. He nodded. She then gestured to the stuck girl. Go help her out before she gets severely injured. I'll handle the zero pointer. She replied. He understood and did as he was told. And Akagi made quick work of the zero pointer. Then the test was over. Kuroto took down a couple more robots, and right when he was going to go attack the zero pointer, the test was over. The students gathered in the main field where Recovery Girl was healing some of the students, who were dumb enough to get hurt. Kuroto caught up to Akagi. Wow. These future heroes were dumb enough to get hurt, Kuroto said. Yep. There was even one girl who was stuck under rocks and had to be have another student save her, Akagi replied. Wow. I didn't really pay much too much attention to the others to see anything like that, Kuroto replied. She rolled her eyes. It was the only a way to get this other kid distracted long enough for me to take the zero pointer. I see you went for it, Kuroto said. Yeah, and I was disappointed, she replied. Why, was it easy to beat or something? Kuroto asked. It only took a few attacks, and it was destroyed, she said unamused. Hey, extra, the blonde yelled, waking, walking up to Akagi. I'm glad I waited to attack it then. Great. Look who's back, Kuroto says sarcastically. Akagi rolled her eyes, but turned to face him. What? She said coldly. Why the hell were you taking my robot kills? He yelled. Kuroto tried to hold back a laugh, but fails. Wow. You're that petty? <laughs> Look what the hero society is bringing up these days. Ha! Huh? Stay out of this damn extra, he replied back. Then he turned to Akagi, who seemed to be smiling, but it didn't reach her eyes. Her icy gray eyes were glaring harshly at this kid. Like I'm going to listen to you, Kuroto replied. He practically growled, but Akagi stepped in front of him. The reason is because you were incompetent and too slow. She said coldly, glaring at him, and then walked away as if nothing had happened. Bye, Extra. Kuroto crawled back while walking away with Akagi. He stood there dumbfounded. What the hell just happened? 
he mumbled to himself. Once Akagi was far away enough from him, she started laughing, and Kuroto started to laugh with her. Did you see his face? Sure did, he exclaimed. She smiled. I sure hope he knows his place now, she laughed, walking away. Hey, wait up! A different boy's voice called to Akagi. Yeah, Kuroto laughed. Then he turned around. Did you meet anyone else? Kuroto asked Akagi. Not that I recall, she said, turning to face the green-haired boy. I knew it! You're the one who told me to save that girl and defeated the zero-pointer, the kid said. So he saved the girl under rock, Kuroto said. Oh, yeah! I forgot about that, she mumbled. Anyways, I'm Azuku Midoriya. Nice to meet you, he said with a bright smile. Uh, nice to meet you, too, Kuroto replied. And you both are? he asked. He wanted to make as many friends as he possibly could. I am Kuroto Kayan, Kuroto replied. Akagi, she said simply, then started to walk away, not wanting to talk to any more people. Kuroto followed her, not really wanting to indulge in more conversation. And that's where I'm going to leave it off today. Sorry that's not a 20-minute special. I'll try to do that next time. Bye!